Uh, Pre-recorded, all right. <laughs> so okay. what's up, Mark? Um, nice to meet you. And we just were talking like a minute ago about how we don't know that much about each other, to be honest. You just kind of seemed like we had an interesting story. We were chatting a bit on Reddit, and there's like a crazy amount of digital nomad people and great advice for digital nomads if you didn't already know that. I mean, you obviously do, but to my to our viewers out there. Um, and yeah, and it, you seem like you had an interesting story. I kind of wanted to hear more about it because I, I don't really know yet that much. And it'll kind of be like a fun thing. We'll talk about it, how you got started, and some tics, tip, <laughs> tics, tips and tricks for other digital nomad hopefuls or people getting started on their journey. So take it away. Um, yeah, you were just saying you got started in January. So what what do you do exactly? Yeah, I'm a front-end developer, software engineer for a company in San Francisco called Doximity. Um, we basically make a, a medical social network for doctors in the U.S. Um, so yeah, I focus primarily on JavaScript type stuff. Cool, man. So um, just to clarify, you are full-time then a remote employee, is that right? Yeah, it's basically just like a regular nine to five job uh, with the exception that I don't go to the office except for maybe like four times a year. Um, yeah, it's, it's pretty pretty typical otherwise. That's amazing. Um, I mean, there's so many questions that are popping through my head. Uh, okay, let's start with um, how did you how did you find the job? How did you land that job? Um, so about two years ago... Uh, uh, the idea is to work totally remote, and a lot of the times I was remote from the client anyway, so it just kind of seemed silly for me to be showing up to an office in Chicago every day when I'm really a remote worker. Right. Um, so I started having that idea, um, was kind of looking around at different uh, companies that, that do remote work that, that I do, you know, web development, that kind of thing. Um, and then I saw a company uh, that I came across searching. I remember, like, I had a friend that worked there, at least I could it's pretty sure that he still worked there. Anyway, um, a friend of mine I've known since I was like really young. Um, he also lives in Chicago. Um, so I met up with him and kind of asked like, hey, do you guys uh, do like front-end web development? He's like, actually, yeah. And uh, so, you know, one thing led to another and uh, that's how I ended up at uh, my current company. So it's actually kind of a kind of a weird, you know, uh, atypical way of, uh, of finding these remote jobs, but it uh, worked out. So, yeah. No, that's cool. I'm actually glad that you shared that because I think especially people who want to be digital, digital nomads, they focus so much on searching online and like, you know, trying to find these links and finding like different forums and places to go. But actually this just is a proof that you can still uh, use the old fashioned uh, networking word of mouth method it works just as well, if not better, you know, I think it's a great way just to start with people, you know. Um, so yeah, it's cool that it worked out for you that way. Yeah, and I think, you know, I see a lot of people um, trying to just throw resumes and see what sticks around, but definitely I think you got to put some value in uh, the old-fashioned person-to-person networking because I think that has just so much more value when you can be introduced by somebody who already knows you and can vouch for you. Yep, yep, totally. Actually, it's funny. You say, all right, so I, I mentioned this in a few of my other videos. Have you heard of the, the job searching manual, What Color Is Your Parachute? No, huh? Okay, this is kind of like the OG of job hunt manuals, and I'm, I think I literally have it right over here. I'm going to see if I... Uh, uh, yes, here it is. So, uh, I will like literally bring this on camera whenever I can. Um, so this is the updated 2018 version, but they've had this for like 20, 30 years. I don't even know. And it just basically, I mean, there's a, I don't want to get too sidetracked, but the point being is that in this book, it goes into like just... Do as much as you possibly can. And like you said, people will focus like, oh, on one method, kind of, I would say, majority are like, oh, yeah, you know, apply for those like job listings, which is always good. You should. But that's just like one method among many. And it's not even the most effective one. It's the easiest one. It's the most straightforward. Uh, I'm sorry. I'm like just kind of blabbing to my audience. Not, I mean, obviously you, you know this, but. Um, <laughs> no, I learn stuff all the time. Yeah, yeah. And maybe, you know what, for you viewers out there, I'll link uh, to, in the description below, to one of my videos where I talk more about some other cool tips and tr tips and tricks from this book, because it's really awesome. Um, anyway, okay, so, <laughs> um, yeah, so you're doing this remote thing. Now, let's talk about, you know, I think maybe most people might not be looking for the exact 
type of job that you're doing or in that exact field, but they would be, you know, looking to transition and more like the cultural aspects. So how was that just in terms of for you, was it easy to transition from going to like a traditional nine to five versus just like now I'm fully remote? Like, what do I do? You know? Yeah. Um, for me, there wasn't, there really wasn't too much of a transition because I still keep pretty regular hours. You know, I, like I said, it's like a nine to five because I'm working like nine to five in whatever time zone I end up being in for the most part. Um, the exception being Europe because I got to match West Coast hours. But I, for the most part, no matter where I'm at, it still is like the same hours that I had uh, with the regular office job. So, so there was not really too much of a transition there that I know a lot of nomads sometimes have that, you know, where their hours are all over the place. Um, so I didn't have that. Um, and then the other thing, too, as I mentioned before, uh, before I had this job, I was doing consulting. And a lot yeah. of the times my clients would be remote. You know, a lot of times I would travel. Uh, so I had a lot of travel. Um, but the times I wasn't, I was kind of like a remote employee anyway. So really, this didn't feel very different um, with the exception that uh, now I make the decisions of where to travel. Um, otherwise, it was pretty similar for the most part. Not too, not too big of a transition. I would say, for me, the bigger difference was going from like consulting at really, really large companies to startup, which is like a totally different environment. Um, and that has nothing to do with being remote or not mm. remote. It's just the, the the type of work and like what's important and like team cultures. Um, I found very different between the two. So that was really the biggest change uh, okay. from from my previous job to this. Oh, yeah, interesting. Would you would you um... I don't want to put words in your mouth, but uh, would you give that as a piece of advice for people who are considering becoming remote digital nomad, whatever the hipster term is, um, would you say like it's a good idea to kind of get their feet wet with first doing it kind of part time or doing it on the side freelance, however they want to do it, maybe starting from their home base where they already are or doing side trips and then jumping into it fully like if, if they like it or... Um, yeah, I don't know. I think everybody's different and, uh, I think it just depends on your yeah. level of discipline and, uh, what's expected of you and your role, right? There's a lot of different factors that come into play with what makes sense. Um, I think for me, you know, I actually didn't uh, go nomad right away when I got this job. I, I, I lived in Chicago at the, when I started the job and I lived there for about another six months or so before I oh. uh, left my apartment, uh, oh. when my apartment lease expired and then I started to travel. And I did that intentionally too, you know, I um, actually extended my apartment lease for, for a few months to do that. Um, and that was so that I could just uh, get a good feel for the company and my role before I started traveling and adding that complexity on top of things. Right. Um, and that I would advise, I think. I think you should be really comfortable in, with your work before you add in the travel part. Because travel is complicated, you know. for a long time difficult right so you know in my sorry, mind, I sorry. want to add that complexity on top of a brand uh, brand new role i have been there i um is this my internet is it just like garbled oh the last... sorry i wasn't sure it's not yeah. your fault uh could you just repeat the, like the last couple sentences yeah. yeah sure sorry um i was saying um yeah i i would think i would advise uh somebody to at least stay in one spot for a while when they start a new role somewhere right. um just because traveling is difficult um, even for somebody like me who did a lot of travel as a consultant, um, it's still, no matter, no matter how long you've been doing it, it's, it's just an extra challenge. So if you've got that on top of a brand new job or a brand new role, um, I just think that that could be really stressful, um, and not in a good way. So, uh, for me, I thought it was a really good idea to stay put, uh, in one place for a few months when I started this job until that, uh, I became accustomed to it. And then I started to travel. Um, so, you know, I think everybody's different, maybe, yeah. maybe different people's experiences are, are different than mine. But uh, for me, I think that was really helpful. Okay. That's, um, it's a good, uh, good point that you bring up because travel being stressful or difficult, because I think with, you know, social media, Instagram, Facebook, everyone just sees like, Oh, you know, digital note, hashtag digital man working on the beach, like in Chiang Mai, you know, like in the, in the palm tree shade, whatever it is, like sipping on a pina colada, like right, with my laptop, so no one actually thinks of like all the challenges and obstacles and the crazy things, the negative or difficulties that can come along. So what, I, are, what would be the biggest, since you mentioned stressful, what's the biggest challenge to, to travel, especially maybe in the beginning? 
Yeah, um, I mean, you made a really good point there with, you know, everybody's posting on Instagram, like, all, like, the cool stuff, and I do the same thing, you know, I try to stay positive uh, publicly, you know, I, I just think that's a good thing to do, sure. um, but the, the problem with that is uh, people who don't know what that's like, um, they don't see all the bad stuff that happens, too, you know, like, it, 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 there's struggle that you have. Um, I've been extorted by police. Um, you know, you're always having to like meet new people. Yeah. Um, yeah, there's just like a lot of challenges that you don't normally have when you're living uh, wherever you're from. Um, and uh, those are things that I don't really share publicly that that often. So okay. you know, somebody who only knows me on Instagram would not know those things. They might think like everything's roses and unicorns and rainbows. But uh, <laughs> uh, there are there are still challenges though. Um, yeah. And, uh, yeah, I think probably the biggest and most consistent one that you'll find everywhere, especially if you travel really frequently, um, is your social group is hard mm. to maintain. Yep. Um, you meet lots and lots of cool people. And I love that about this. You know, I, I stay in hostels for the most part, um, just cause it's a more social environment and, uh, yeah, you meet so many really cool people. Uh, the problem is in a week, two weeks, a month, they're gone. They're like in a different part of the world or you're in a different part of the world. Right. Um, yeah. And I still keep in touch with a lot of people that I've met in various parts of the world. But it's nice. when you're at home, you've got a consistent group of people for years that uh, that you have in your social circle. So that's definitely a struggle. Um, and I think that's pretty common with a lot of nomads I've talked to that, that have uh, a similar issue with that. Awesome. Yeah, yeah. I mean, that's awesome. But I mean, like, good point. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> totally. And actually, I was just thinking when you were saying that, like, that's a, such a big topic. Um, that I don't think gets directly addressed as much because people are more focused it's just like on the job. It's like, oh, what do I do? And what's the cool city to be at? And they don't think of all the, the social aspects and meeting people. That could be a video in itself. Maybe we'll make a yeah, part two. Um, but I think, yeah, this one, we've already like gone over a great amount of uh, helpful info and, uh, you know, good. it's good to be aware of all that stuff that like, you don't really doesn't get advertised in a job description or what people talk about so much. So, uh, so right. we'll, we'll wrap this one up for now. Thank you so much for, for joining us. <laughs> um, well, yeah, no, it's been fun and, uh, Thank you, man. yeah, man. All right. So, uh, adios for now and talk to you soon in a minute, probably. All right. Absolutely, yeah. Cool. See ya.